Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to the Negro and his God, Path 1. And here is a very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. The goal is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, blacks are the only group of people who take their most precious possessions, their children, and ask their oppressors to educate them and to mold and shape their minds. Cather G. Woodson and from Arthur Scumberg, the American Negro must remake his past in order to make his future. History must restore what slavery took away. And here is a very big shout out to our donors and those that support us. And remember, you too could support us at patreon.com forward slash our renaissance or paypal.me forward slash our renaissance. Thank you. The Negroes and their God Have you ever heard something like, where was God, Allah, Jesus or Muhammad during the slave trade? Or if the Negroes worshipped the Almighty, why were they not protected from the slave trade? Or that if God existed, how could he have allowed the slave trade? And strangely also, you also hear that it was the same Negroes that sold themselves and sometimes you hear that they even loved the slave trade and sometimes you hear that they enjoyed it. And have you also heard how they disobeyed God and he punished them with slavery and that they were to be enslaved for 400 years based on Genesis 15.13 or that America today is spiritual Egypt or that the almighty creator of heaven and earth would be coming to free them, that's the Negroes, or that the almighty will help them re-enslave those that have been enslaving them. And then you are wondering how someone would believe that the same God that could not save them from slavery before or when it was happening would come back later to save them and how God could have saved them when they were supposedly the same selling themselves. That is to say, they liked the slave trade, hence they were doing it to themselves. So why would anybody come to save you from doing what you are enjoying, so to say? And somehow they also claim to have disobeyed God, but you don't know or see what they are doing differently. That is as in repentance. Remember, if they told you they disobeyed God and God was punishing them with slavery according to his word if we assume but without conceding that the almighty spirit being could have written a book. So the question becomes how could they have disobeyed him when they are not doing anything different from what others are doing and above all they are not the only people on earth so why only them? Perhaps these are questions you must have asked yourself before now. And before we proceed, here are things to note that God in this video will mean the European concept or European deity and that Allah in this video will mean the Arab concept or Arab deity. And please note that we do not believe the almighty creator of heaven and earth can be speaking from both sides of the mouth and that the almighty creator will mean the spirit being that created and governs heaven and earth as defined by the slave masters in their account of the Negroes in a material published circa 1714 and that's our interest. So the date and timeline for this whole video will be something between 1434 to circa 1900. So let us reference Atlas Geographus or a complete system of geography ancient and modern for Africa containing what is of most use in blue, Veranius, Celarius, Cleverius, whatever, volume 4 and it was published 1714 and there we are shown that 
Adepa concludes with their religion, he says, The Negroes own a god that created and governs heaven and earth, but think it needless to serve him because he is good-natured, whereas they think it their duty to pray and sacrifice to the devil for fear he should hurt them. They call God Orisa. They have their fetishes or idols of wood, green herbs, etc., and keep priests who pretend to be magicians, and the people apply to them for advice in their doubts. And going further, it tells us that the Negroes can neither need nor write, and to continue them in ignorance, the priests have enjoined it as a law upon themselves to marry into one another's families and to teach nobody else to read or write, so that those poor people have only a confused notion of the being of a god, but think it not necessary to pray to him, alleging that he who causes tempests, thunder, and lightning is so potent that he has no need of our prayers and that it's impossible he can have a son, and therefore they abhor the Christian religion. So our interest is the fact that they abhor the Christian religion. This is the Negroes. It doesn't change. So we are told that they own a God that created and governs heaven and earth. And here we are told that they abhor the Christian religion because they did not believe that the Almighty Spirit being could have a son. So we need to bear these two points in mind. Our interest is to establish whether or not the Almighty could have saved them from slavery or they were not actually worshipping the Almighty. Remember, the slave master is a subtle beast and may have deceived the Negroes away from the true creator of heaven and earth. Hence, they became vulnerable. And also, in terms of prayer, remember, if you had children, for example, and they have a need, and you know that need, they don't come singing you praises and falling down and singing all night and doing all kinds of stuff before you give them what they need. That's the same way the Negro saw the Most High and he kept his laws until the slave master came, which is something of a different video. Our interest is to look at why they were not saved by the Most High during the slave trade and how they are still being misled till today. So please, we would love for you to look for this video called how the Bible supports slavery by Cosmic Skeptic and watch it along with this other video does the Bible support slavery from another channel called The Bait by Alan Parr. Our interest is for you to understand the danger in believing anything simply because somebody that looks like you is saying it. You see the same thing happen in places like Biafra and Ambazonia where the foot soldiers the same people that captured and sold the Negroes as slaves are murdering them in their numbers, colluding with the slave masters. But because you think all Africans are the same, or that Negroes and Pygmies and Hottentots, Babas, Tuaregs, Fulanis, Arabs and all that are the same, simply because the slave master labeled all of them Africa, you are looking the other way, the same way the slave master is looking. So our interest is for you to see how some so-called African Americans will be defending the slave trade, whereas some so-called Europeans or white people or whatever you choose to call them will tell you that it was wrong. So the important thing about that is so you understand the difference between those who were against the slave trade and those who were for it. Remember at that time, the same way you see some people today telling you that the Almighty said there will be slaves for 400 years and all that. That was how some people justified it at that time. Remember the Negroes said the Almighty sent them to come and till the soil, which we shall see later in this video. Reflection time. Do you remember to ask yourself questions like this? One man allegedly killed in Iran attracts media attention. But the same media does not report hundreds of Negroes being murdered in Biafra and Ambazonia. Do you ask yourself why? Now remember to ask yourself this question very well. Because if they were genuinely quarreling, if they were genuinely enemies to themselves, then if the media of the Europeans and Americans refused to report on Biafra and Ambazonia, the Persian media 
the Iranian media, the Middle Eastern media would have been reporting on it. For both of them and all of them not to be reporting it should tell you that there must be something there. So if BBC, VOA and CNN do not report Biafra and Ambazonia the same way the news media in a place like Nigeria and that sub-region do not do the same, that should tell you that there must be somewhere they are working together. So why does Iranian media not report them too? That means he is also working with them or they are all working together. So because both Iran, which was Persia, and USA enslaved Negroes, so they are both the same thing. So don't think it's only the Americans because they are on top today and the Negroes are still there. The Muslims, Jews and Christians are still working together against the Negroes. So the question again, if Biafra and Ambazonia are not newsworthy, no matter how many people are killed, why is one Iranian allegedly killed newsworthy? That's our question to you. Please put it in the comment section why you think that one man killed is worth your time, but not the hundreds murdered by the slave hunting terror group which you call army in a place like Nigeria today, in a place like Cameroon today. That's our simple question to you. We want you to apply your humanity, your sense of judgment to remember that those people killed in as much as the slave master does not see them as human you should be able to look twice, look well, and look better. And so, have you ever seen something like this, Black Iran, the forgotten legacy of enslaved Africans in Persia, is being resurrected? And then, you look at the same news in the slave master's media reported like Iran's forgotten African migrants in pictures. And you read further to understand the difference between the migrants and the enslaved Africans and you see where the slave master writes, after their emancipation, many former African slaves stayed in Iran's southern regions on the Persian Gulf. Ever since, Esai says Afro-Uranians have been fully integrated and accepted by the Iranian society. And then you wonder the difference between migrants and former slaves. And that makes you to understand why Malcolm X said the media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. So you are again see how one person killed in Iran has taken all your time, all your spaces and all your news. Meanwhile, the same media does not report the killings going on in Biafra and Ambazonia and in the middle belts of Nigeria. These are our simple question to you, why you have to open your eyes. So before you choose which side to be on when Iran and the US is grandstanding, you need to ask yourself, are they genuinely quarreling? And even if they are, why is the media reporting them but does not report when people are massacred in Biafra or Ambazonia? Those are our little questions to you and we have our reason for asking that. So let us quickly reference treaties etc concluded between Great Britain and Persia and between Persia and other foreign powers wholly or partially in force on the 1st of April 1891 and it was by Sir Edward Heslet and it was published 1891 as well. And there we are shown that Fermon issued by the Shah to Haji Mazia Agassi prohibiting the importation of Negro slaves into Persia by sea 12th June 1848. So remember the British stopped their own in 1808. Apparently they were still exporting Negro slaves to Persia at that time. You need to bear this in mind. So when you see them playing or grandstanding or displaying any forms of aggression between themselves, as a Negro, you need to ask yourself, this same media that does not report when hundreds or 200 people are killed by the Nigerian army, which was the slave hunting militia, but is reporting one person being killed, that should make you to reason. Reason, look beyond your nose. Ask yourself, what are they really doing?
Remember, if you are looking at things like the Nigerian army or the Cameroonian army or the slave master's foot soldiers, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. The slave master knows this. So he can use them anyhow he wants. He might kill one person and it's all over the news. Those ones, because of their lack of humanity and common sense, can kill 100 thinking that they are the same with the US or the same with Iran. Remember to ask yourself, those people that are demonstrating in Nigeria because somebody was killed in Iran, where were they when Biafrans were murdered? Where were they when people in Ambazonia were killed? Then why did the government not shoot them the same way they shoot Biafrans or Ambazonians when they come out to say we want freedom? You would have started understanding who the Negroes are. And going further it says, 12th June 1848 and in bracket 10 Rejeb 1264. So we are not sure why the changes in dates. But you have to remember that the Islamic calendar, the Jewish calendar, they are all different. It's only the Negroes that have to follow what the slave master has given him in everything. So it goes further to say, Your Excellency, the Haji, let them not bring any Negroes by sea. Let them be brought by land, purely for the sake of Farant Sahib, Lieutenant Colonel Farant, with whom I am much pleased. I have consented to this. On this subject, write to the governors of Fars and Arabia, Persian Arabia, solely on account of the goodness of Farant, I have consented. Otherwise, some trifling discussions still exist between us and the English government, His Excellency Haji Mazar Agassi, the Shah. Fermon issued by the Shah to the governor of Fars, prohibiting the importation of slaves into Persia by sea, 12th June 1848. So you can read it and read it well too, so that you understand that there is no difference between the USA and the Iranians insofar as the Negro is concerned. And remember to ask yourself very well too, why the so-called Hebrew Israelites and although Aborigine wannabes will always ignore the Islamic slave trade and the Arab slave trade and face the one of Americas, not even the European, trying to tell you that the Almighty could have ordained such an evil against the people, which is impossible. Let us also reference a new translation of the Persian tales from an original version of the Indian comedies of Muckles designed for the service and amusement of the British ladies by Edward Burton and this was published in 1754 and there we are shown that we were preparing to go on shore when an idle seaman told us the isle was inhabited by negroes who worshipped a serpent to whom they sacrificed all strangers that fell into their hands and that we must if possible gain the Maldives. Our interest is for you to see how the negro was carefully demonized all over the place. You see how they said they worshipped the serpent that they sacrificed everybody they saw to. It's the same thing the Europeans said about the Negroes. So each time they find a reason to justify their atrocities against the Negroes. Now your question might become, how come the media does not report the killings going on in places like Biafra and Ambazonia? It is because they are still working with their foot soldiers. Like we told you, their foot soldiers lack both humanity and common sense. Why not ask yourself why somebody maybe 80 years, even 70 something years, claims to be a president in an African country, but little boys from Europe will give him guns and he will be killing his siblings and be celebrating the killings. You should be able to ask yourself, what's the difference between those ruling there and those they are killing? Those are questions we will want you to answer yourself, not for us to answer them for you. Let us also reference glimpses of life and manners in Persia by Lady Shell with notes on Russia, Kuris, Turkmans, Nestorians and Persia whatever and was published in 1856 and there we are shown that another source for obtaining slaves for the Persian market is by means of the pilgrims to Kabbalah. These slaves are conferred directly across the desert from Mecca or Medina to Baghdad to which later city the pilgrims always resort. The Persians Hajis also on their return from Mecca often make purchases of one or two Negroes. 
A few also are brought by the route of Damascus, but taking collectively the importation of slaves to Persia by these routes is insignificant and its cessation or continuance is entirely dependent on the will of the Turkish government. Please take note of this very well. And here it says partial abolition of the importation of slaves, Negroes in Persia, condition of slaves in Persia, return to Tehran, punishment of a general for being defeated, a bastinado and all that. But our interest is for you to see that he is talking about the Negro slaves. Remember it was a global thing at that time. So if they are jumping around today, all we want you to ask yourself is, how come the BBC, VOA and Al Jazeera that has no space to report the killings in Biafra and Ambazonia has enough space to report the killing of one person? That shows you how much they value you. It's incumbent on you as well to respond by showing them that you also value your own siblings. So imagine if all of you and all so-called African Americans, the Jamaicans, the Haitians, were to write your MPs about Biafra and Ambazonia, the same way you are blogging about one person that was killed in Iran. If you had done the same thing, that would have gone a long way to show you that there is some value in the life of a Negro. Now, remember, the whole thing is not just about what the news media chooses to tell you. You have to ask yourself why they will tell you one and not tell you another, even though both are killings. Just ask yourself that very simple question. That's all we challenge you to do. And it goes further to say, no evil is without alloy. And so it may be said of the recall of the Prince Governor of Mazindaran. For a long time, various attempts had been made to induce the Shah's government to put a stop to the importation of Negro slaves from Africa by the Persian Gulf. Now, remember the Indian and Aboriginal wannabes are telling you that they are Aborigines to the Americas. So, it's the same way you see the Negroes in Persia, in Iran today, will tell you they are Aborigines of the place. So, gradually they will be forgotten. That's this grandstanding you see the US and Iran doing. They are not really in enmity. And if you doubt what we're saying, all we challenge you to do is to check the Iranians that are in America and how well they are doing. And compare it with a place like Nigeria, a place like Cameroon, how their foot soldiers treat those they consider Negroes. That will begin to tell you. You may not understand why their grandstanding is deceitful, except you look at the fact that there are many Iranian Americans, there are many Persian Americans doing well. Whereas if you go to West Africa, for example, their foot soldiers will close a business simply because it belongs to supposedly a negro or an Igbo man or anything they choose to call them but they are just the same people the negroes were all one people if you doubt what we're saying go and research the case of Aboshuda Biola he was a negro he won an election and all that somebody else died and they connived with the slave masters to murder him in cold blood so all you need to remember very well is that their foot soldiers lack both humanity and common sense so because they lack it they don't even understand when the slave master is playing on their intelligence in fact insulting their intelligence because they don't have it anyway so it will just be playing with it you can see people like john kerry have iranian sons-in-law and you can also see how successful iranian businessmen are in a place like america as against your own where in a place like nigeria the slave masters food soldiers the fulanese the canaries we try to make you believe that you are in one country with them but then their duty is to make sure that your businesses do not thrive their duty is to unleash terror on you their duty is to hide behind the army and murder innocent people the same way they captured and sold the slaves to them that's the same thing they are doing if you doubt what we're saying why not explain to us why the same army the same way the army will go and invade in and the colonel's house why does he not invade the Fulani herdsman's house? Why does he not even stop them from killing people? At least if you think the army is useful to you. And going forward, it says there are three kinds of Negro slaves in Persia, that's Iran, who are named Bombasis, Nubis, and Habishis. The former come from Zanzibar, that is Zanzibar, if you were to research this further. 
and the neighboring country in the interior, but I do not know the derivation of the name. The others, as their names imply, are natives of Nubia and Abyssinia. The Bambasis, who are genuine Negroes, are in great disrepute as being ferocious, treacherous, and lazy. So you see, somebody comes to capture you from your house, but he says you are ferocious, you are lazy. That's the power of the media. The media is used to demonize the Negroes. That's what they do. So that's why you see that they don't report Biafra and Ambazonia so that people don't get to know what they are doing, knowing that their foot soldiers lack common sense and humanity. Now think about it. When Ethiopia, that's modern day Ethiopia, conducted a referendum, the news media in Nigeria did not carry them. Your question should now be, why did they not carry them? Because they don't want you to know that these are what others are doing. Remember, the foot soldiers are there because of their lack of common sense, their lack of humanity. So the slave master uses them to enslave and subjugate the area. If you doubt what we're saying, conduct deeper research about it. And going further, it says, the newbies and habishis, excepting in being black, do not present the usual Negro characteristics. They are highly esteemed as being mild, faithful, brave, and intelligent, and are generally confidential servants in Persian households. Ill treatment must of course sometimes take place when there is unlimited power on one hand and entire submission on the other. Those are not our interests for now. Our interest is to show you that before you take sides with either the US or Iran, you need to understand that if you're a Negro or typically a descendant of former slave, you have to understand that both are one and the same. What they are doing is grandstanding. If they are not, tell us why the media will report about one person murdered, but Biafra and Ambazonia, they don't ever talk about them. Ask yourself this that simple question. If they do not talk about them, that means there is some place they met and agreed not to. It's not a fluke. Think about it. If, for example, they were genuinely enemies to themselves, for example, if the BBC, VOA, Al Jazeera, CNN, name it, of those countries like the US and its allies do not report on Biafra and Ambazonia, you will expect something like Press TV and all those Iranian media to be reporting them. But they also do not. Now, if you check in a place like Nigeria, Shites were murdered. What did they do? These are people that follow the same religion with them. What did they do? Because they know that they are foot soldiers, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. There is no better way to put it. If you doubt what we are saying, bring out the two sides together. And you see, in Iran, they just said they killed one person. That's one person. Their food soldiers murder hundreds every day and consider it their strength. If you doubt what we're saying, just look at what the army, Nigerian army is doing. Look at Cameroonian army. See what they are doing over Biafra. Now, those countries' corporate existence are to the benefit of the slave masters. That's why they don't report them. But that's a subject of a different video anyway. Let's move forward. And here it says, on the whole, however, the lot of slaves in Persia is perhaps as favorable as that institution will admit of. They are not treated with contempt as in America. There are no special laws to hold them in a state of degradation. They are frequently restored to freedom and when this happens, they take their station in society without any reference to their color or descent. So. It goes further to say white slaves frequently rise to the highest employments, but these are commonly captives taken in war. But those are not our interests. Our interests are the Negroes at that time. You notice that he mentioned color and all that. Then, before you defend America or Iran, just remember that they are one and the same. Remember it was the Muslims and Christians that captured and sold the Negroes. The same way the media is not reporting Biafra and Ambazonia today was the same way they obviously connived to claim that it was the Negroes that could have sold themselves. You see the Nigerian army doing the same thing. Do you see any of them call them to order? They understand that those people there, they lack humanity and common sense. Now if you think that because there are some so-called Igbos or Negroes that are in the army, they have been conditioned with that level of reasoning. So they now see their siblings as slaves and victims. Otherwise, why would somebody take a gun and kill his brother? 
For example, if you look at the Biafra and Ambazonia agitations, all it's about is for people's roads and schools to be built. Now ask yourself, why would somebody kill his brother for asking for roads or schools to be built? That should tell you how their foot soldiers risen. And in the event that you have been following our videos and perhaps you've heard when we were telling you what their game plan was with the Indian and Aborigine wannabe narrative that they're using some of the so-called African Americans to propagate today. So you remember where we showed you the video of one Dane Calloway, you can watch his channel with the intention to at least identify how the slave master operates and how he uses his foot soldiers wherever they are to sell his lies and the other dummies to the Negroes. So you remember where Dan Calloway claimed that because that part of Africa was called Ethiopia or Guinea that the slaves couldn't have been stolen from that area because those were Negroes that these people were supposedly either Ethiopians or anything else but not Negroes. You need to bear this in mind. Remember, the same reason they are changing to something like Aborigine or Niji or every other rubbish he concocts is why they normally change the Negro appellation every now and then. Remember it was just in 1988 that they changed from Black American to African American. Now they want to change to Aborigine or Niji. It's the same thing, the same game. They have been playing it. So let us show you where this Ethiopia that he's talking about comes into play. Now remember, believe it or not, he is a slave master's foot soldier. That's how they propagate their lies. He will keep telling it for them. They will just pay him. He probably doesn't understand why they want him to be saying it. But we're going to show you so that when you watch his videos, you will understand why he is saying what he's saying. He wasn't born then, but they understand that the Negroes believe what they are told. You see how they are all over the place simply because the media is telling them about one man killed in Iraq or anywhere. But then, since they hear about their own siblings, wherever they are, be it in Biafra, Ambazonia, or Middle Belt of Nigeria, murdered by the slave master foot soldiers, have you seen any of them ask basic questions as to why are these people being killed? They pretend not to see, even though some of those people you see are controlled, so they don't talk about it because they already know what they are expected to do. So let us reference the history of slavery and the slave trade, ancient and modern, the African slave trade and the political history of slavery in the United States. Note that it says political history of it. And this was compiled from authentic materials by W.O. Blake. And it was published in 1860. And there we are told that Negro land or Nigritia, Nigritia is called Nigeria today. Remember all this crap about Nigeria created in 1914, they are all lies. They are on their march in conquering the Negroes there. You may not understand this unless you go back and study the history of that area and what is happening today very well. So he goes further to say, it is that part of the interior of Africa stretching from the great desert on the north to the unascertained commencement of Kafir land on the south and from the Atlantic on the west to Abyssinia on the east. In fact, the entire interior of this great continent may be called the land of the Negroes. So you see how they have taken them further down. In fact, they are almost gone now. So you understand why they don't report Biafra and Ambazonia. Just look at what it says here. It says, it is upon Ethiopia in an special manner that the cause of slavery has fallen. At first, it bore but a share of the burden. Brethons and Scythians were the fellow slaves of the Ethiopian. But at last, all the other nations of the earth seemed to conspire against the Negro race, agreeing never to enslave each other, but to make the blacks the slaves of all alike. So you see why the Iranian media and the Arab media and the European media and American media will not report about Biafra and Ambazonia. Because those Fulanese, the Babas, the Kanuris, they are their foot soldiers. The same way they captured the slaves. Why not ask yourself which type of country you will be in? Nothing works. You have a business. They will make sure it's frustrated. They are only interested in making sure that people suffer. The army is deployed to fight civilians. That's one person 
that as far as you are not Fulani or you talk about freedom, they will deploy the army to strike terror into them. The same way the Americans or the Persians would have done during the slave trade proper. Like we told you, their foot soldiers lack common sense. That's why the places are not making progress. The same way all these other people made progress because they utilized their own slaves, so to say. Very well. Now, remember to ask yourself when they tell you that the Negroes were already slaves in Africa. Now, they tell you that one man has 400 slaves, but he doesn't have a house. He has a hut. So, where would the 400 slaves be? The reason they got away with those lies was at that time they were able to convince people that the Negroes were beasts. They lived on trees. They didn't live in houses. So, if they told you that they were enslaved, you're not going to ask which house, where were they sleeping? because you will think they were just animals in the bush so that's why they were calling the slave catchers the slave hunters and that's why you have something like the nigerian army which metamorphosed from the slave hunting militia at that time belonging to the fulanese who were classified as arabs at that time you need to bear this in mind conduct your research put it in the comment section if you say this is not what you found so it goes further to say thus this race of human beings has been singled out whether owing to the accident of color or to their peculiar fitness for certain kinds of labor, for infamy and misfortune, and the abolition of the practice of promiscuous slavery in the modern world was purchased by the introduction of a slavery confined entirely to Negroes. Our interest is the fact that it used Ethiopian and Negroes interchangeably here. So you see where Den Calloway is heading to. That's why he went to bring out the map to show you that this place was called Ethiopia at that time because he is only playing the script. He doesn't know that a lot of people have researched these things. Only those that don't research and can't read will believe his lies. But otherwise, those that understand who the Negroes were before now will never believe him. But unfortunately, like we told you, the slave master is hiding behind him. That's why he can propagate the lies. Ask yourself how somebody will see all this. He knows these things are lies, but he is still saying them anyway. Because the slave master understands that if you use a negro, propagate the lie, the negroes will believe him out of sentiments because somebody like them is saying it. The same way you see that when Nigerian army, for example, murders innocent people over Biafra or Cameroonian army, murders innocent people over Ambazonia, everybody keeps quiet because they think oh it's the same people killing themselves they don't know that it is the foot soldiers the slave hunters of old killing the negroes notice also that here it tells us that the arabs and moors indeed traversing the letter knew something about ethiopia or the land of the negroes but what knowledge they had was confined to themselves and to the europeans the whole of the continent to the south of the desert was an unknown and unexplored land you see where they did not know these people they already knew that they were eating themselves they were sacrificing humans and all that our interest is for you to see how the slave master operates now he claims that the arabs didn't tell them today you are looking at iran looking at arab world looking at muslim looking at christians and thinking that they are fighting they are not fighting you need to understand that it's pure grandstanding they are not going to go to real war the reason being that they are just deceiving you if you doubt what we're saying it's just a distraction if you doubt what we're saying why not ask yourself why the media does not report biafra or ambazonia deliberately it's not like they report it and and lie about it as much as they did previously this one is they don't report it no matter how many people their foot soldiers murder in that area that should begin to tell you right there there must be an interest they are protecting it's a very simple thing to see if you are a so-called african-american it is incumbent upon you to find out why they don't report those areas but they are now telling you about iran telling you about one person killed now you ask yourself as you make your bed so will you lie on it they kill any number of people there you don't bother you don't ask but they kill one person in iran you join them blogging writing oh america god has blessed them how can the almighty that created heaven and earth send you to go and kill his child so if allah and god were the same thing the same beings and assuming but without considering that they are the same as the creator of heaven and earth which one is the americans fighting on his side is it allah or god so again it's important to use some of these their grandstanding techniques 
to understand the lies in the religions they sold to the Negroes. Remember when we started this, we showed you that the Negroes did not worship any of these gods today back then, but they have been deceived. So when they ask you why they were not protected from the slave trade, you have to remember that they obviously were not worshipping their creator. They obviously embraced the slave master's gods. And again, you need to also remember to ask yourself a very simple question. When they tell you that they disobeyed God and God put slavery on them and all those rubbish, remember to ask yourself, what are they doing different now? Have they started obeying him now that he will come and redeem them? The answer is no. They are still doing the same thing others were doing. They are still doing worshipping the same gods because some Negroes are Muslims, some are Christians, some are Judaism, some are Buddhist, some are atheists, some are agnostic, some just name it, any religion at all. There are Negroes there. So which one are they worshipping? If they say all are the same, which one is that God that they told us, which you saw yourself, that created and governs heaven and earth that they were worshipping before today? At least that's why we showed you where they said they abhorred Christianity. So we also know that your next question might be if the modern day Ethiopia is the same Ethiopia being talked about now. So let us reference W.E.B. Du Bois article of uh, 1935 titled Interracial Implications of the Ethiopian Crisis, a Negro View. Foreign Affairs, these are all the volumes you can look for the material and study them yourself. The reason the slave master creates replica things is something akin to the golden calf. The replica will serve to deceive the next generation. For example, when they succeed with this, their aborigine and Indian wannabe narrative. The next generation, if you start talking about African Americans, they will be thinking something totally different. The same way you are thinking now that Ethiopians are those people you see today that do not have the woolly hair of the genuine Ethiopian of the ancient days. You also remember that in the biblical account of the so-called Ethiopian eunuch, there is no time that these modern-day Ethiopians who do not have the woolly hair were slaves. So there is no time they were actually castrated and made eunuchs the same way the negroes were made so you need to bear that important point in mind so let's look at what w.e.b. Du Bois said this was an article of 1935 and he writes why for instance is Haile Selassie emperor of Ethiopia and not of Abyssinia so you see that these arguments were there at that time but because time has passed you only think about Ethiopia today the slave master understands this game that's why he's bringing the aboriginal and Indian wannabe. He knows that ultimately he's going to change the Negro identity from African American or being blacks or anything to something totally unrelated. That way he will continue his slavery and the subjugation of the Negroes. So going further, he said, as his predecessors often called themselves. So you see, the same emperor of Ethiopia is what some Jamaicans, supposedly Negroes, sold to Jamaica at that time are now seen as their god because they think african without knowing that those people are not the same with them you see how unfortunate it is when they use somebody you mistakenly think is like you what we think will be the golden calf because if you look at the golden calf story there is something very interesting how come the chief priest does not know the god he was or has been worshiping to the point of presenting the calf to them as Behold your gods that brought you out of bondage. You need to bear that in mind and you can look at the narrative, look at the account. You will understand that the code there is deeper than going to read it in church every Sunday. And going further it says, Abyssinia is a word of Semitic origin, but Ethiopia is Negro. Look at the pictures of Abyssinians, now widely current. They are a Negro, as Negroid as American Negroes. If there is a black race, they belong to it. Of course, there are not and never were any pure Negroes any more than there are pure whites or pure yellows. Humanity is mixed to it, its bones. But in the rough and practical assignment of mankind to three divisions, the Ethiopians belong to the black race. In the mountains of Abyssinia, 
The black huts from the region of the Great Lakes have been mixed with Semitic strains from the shores of the Red Sea, but those are not our interests. Our interest is the fact that he was supposed to be Emperor of Abyssinia, but you see how they turned it to Ethiopia. The same game they are playing with the Indian and Aborigine wannabe today. You need to bear in mind that these guys are subtle. We can tell you boldly that they are Iran, all these things are distractions. So if you are a Biafran or Ambazonian, instead of wasting your time talking about the Iranian and US face off, just face the agitation for Biafra and Ambazonia. That freedom is more important than their grandstanding. They are not going to fight. We've been hearing this since we were children. It's just like Israeli, Palestinian, all those things. The same thing. So don't be deceived. It's only one person. They killed and murdered millions in Biafra in 67 to 70. Did anybody talk about it? Weapons are from them. Their foot soldiers are the most heartless of humans. They lack humanity. They lack common sense. So there is no point wasting your energy in the affairs of Iranians and the Americans. Both enslaved the Negroes. Remember the biblical writing that Ethiopia shall soon stretch out its hands or whatever they wrote there and ask yourself which Ethiopia were they talking about to stretch out its hands? Just research it yourself. We don't want to talk about it so much in this video because we're rounding up. But you see we are in this article W.E.B. DeBose wrote that the hands which the land of burnt faces is today stretching forth to the God of things that be are both physical and spiritual. And today as yesterday they twine gnarled fingers about the very roots of the world. Physically, Ethiopia's fingers are those rough mountains masses of Northeast Africa which form the defensive rampant of the continent and against which Egypt, Egyptian and Persian and Turk, British and French and Italian have so far hammered in vain. But those are not our interest. Our interest is for you to note where it says something about Ethiopia stretching out its hands. Let us also reference The Negro in Ancient Greece by Frank M. Snowden and it was published 1948 and there we are shown that scholars have given little attention to the Negro element in the population of the Greek and Roman world. The present paper is a complement to a recent study in which the writer examined the evidence relating to the Negro in classical Italy. Although this study of the Negro in Italy requires some use of Greek materials, it included no detailed examination of pertinent Greek sources. But those are not our interests. Our interest is further down where it says Greek descriptions of the Negro. If we accept the ordinary identification of the Negro on the basis of color of the skin, shape of the nose, and quality of the hair. It is certain that the Greeks were well acquainted with the racial type which anthropologists designate today as Negroid. In view of the Greek usage of the word, whatever, Ethiopian in brackets, which you can see there, it is safe to assume that a given passage refers to a Negro in the following instances. But you can pause the video and read the entire thing yourself. Our interest is where it says down, the majority of them in bracket i.e. Ethiopians and especially those who dwell along the rivers are black skinned, flat nosed and woolly head. But now today you see the Aboriginal and Indian wannabes telling you that oh no the woolly head doesn't matter that Indians and Aborigines are just the same and um, Negroes are the same. So you see what ignorance and illiteracy could do. And you can also pause here and read the entire thing yourself but it says that the Ethiopians represent their gods as flat-nosed and black. And here also we see where it says several authors give rather definite information as to what the Greeks thought of the Negro in his native land. Diodorus spoke highly of the civilized Ethiopians who inhabited Miro and the land adjoining Egypt. He regarded the Ethiopians as the first people to worship the gods and most Egyptian institutions or derivatives of their civilization. Lucian records that the Ethiopians were the first to deliver the doctrine of astrology to men and that their reputation for wisdom was great. The Greeks also had knowledge of the uncivilized Negro tribesmen 
who lived beyond Napata and Miro, but Lemi attributed their savage habits to the fact that their homes were continually oppressed by the heat, just as continual cold explained the savage behavior of the Scythians. Our interest is for you to see what the Negro was like. You can pause this video and read the entire thing yourself and ask yourself, was it these same gods they are talking about? Could it be the same thing as what the Christians and Muslims were bringing? The answer would be no. So it's incumbent upon you to now conduct your research and find out what the Negroes had before they brought their golden calf. Now remember, they knew that with what the Negroes had, there is no way they could have been vulnerable. So the slave master figured that the best thing he could do was to present him with the golden calf, which is what you see Negroes running about all over the place today with, while being oppressed and subjugated, claiming that the Most High could have ordained slavery for them. Now ask yourself, how can the Most High have a message for you? And he is passing it through someone else. You didn't see him. You didn't hear the Most High. You didn't read where he wrote it. Somebody else brought what you are reading. And you believe that somehow the person must be telling you the truth. Ask yourself, if they cannot report how when your siblings are killed or murdered in Biafra or Ambazonia, is it heaven that they will tell you how to get there? If they can ordinary news of treating you fairly, they can't. But somehow you believe that the slave masters, be it the Arabs or the Europeans, could have brought you away to heaven. But they can't even allow you to live in your own little space, however you want to live in it. That should right there tell you that somebody is lying to you. Let us reference God's dealings with the Negro by Aaron Mayers, and it was published in 1919. And there we are shown that we are confronted with necessity for something more than mere newspaper articles against lynching of Negroes in the South. We need to show that God plainly defended Moses, his prophet, when a sister of his attacked him for marrying an Ethiopian woman. This account is to be found in Numbers 12, 1-15. But our interest is to ask you, if Moses was the same thing with the Ethiopian, why would the sister attack him for marrying the Ethiopian? So this is for the so-called Hebrew Israelites and other people claiming that the book is their history. Whereas the Most High couldn't have given it to other people to bring to you. And you can pause this page and read in that in yourself. But it goes further to say, why does God allow this? The Negro was forced away from his home in Africa, put to serve to become a footpath, a path, or anything and then to multiply and fill the earth in order that the plantation might have enough. Now remember, at each point, based on what the slave master wants, he figures out how to put God into the equation and deceive the Negro to believe that whatever deity he is bringing is the same as the almighty creator of heaven and earth. Now, if you notice here, you will see why they told you that Adam should replenish the earth and all that and all that. That should give you a code right there if you were to read between the lines you will understand what this is saying so now when he is done with that and he has mechanized his farming the negro in numbers is no longer needed he came with population control which we shall look at in subsequent videos but going further you see where it says if he was humble he was worked if he was troublesome he was sold further south in spite of untoward surroundings, the children were sometimes handsome and became housekeepers. They learned the master's manners and became civilized, but they did not get protection after freedom came. Any man who wanted the freedom of the ballot might be shot while riding or butchered when sleeping. You see the same thing with Biafra and Ambazonia today. That's why when you talk about Biafra and Ambazonia, they will send the army. If you doubt what we're saying, just investigate it or write your MPs and you will see how uniformed their responses will be. Even if you wrote them in the US and another writes them in Europe, you will see that they will reply you in about the same terms that will tell you that they are all working together. So as a Negro or a so-called African-American or a descendant of former slave, the time you were talking about Iran and USA, 
should be spent talking about the Negroes in Biafra and Ambazonia. You see the same way that at that time asking for freedom of ballot could end your death. That's what the people are suffering there now. But because the slave master does not tell you about it because he is behind it using his brainless foot soldiers, you don't know about it. But he has told you about one person killed in Iran, you are running all over the place. Now is the time to look further, look deeper and look better. And going further, you see where it says, the Negro who distrusted banks and kept his money at home might find the money an attractive power to draw the violent to his house. If he had also fair wife or daughters, these two might be drawing powers. And when the violence was disclosed next morning and justice was ordered, men said, making such a fuss about Negroes, the Negroes therefore continues in the old rot. But those are not our interest here. Our interest is for you to see how he was and the fact that he was forced away from his home somewhere in what was Negro land and Guinea in Africa today. And going further it says, If perchance the plantation had a preacher, that were the discussed of what he understood to be safe to speak of, that there was a being called God who lived somewhere, that he watched niggers, that he aided whites, that he had a son named Jesus Christ who died for people, whether for niggers doubtful, that you might follow Mass Tom to heaven if you were good, that there was a delightful place called heaven, so warm and sweet and comfortable, that there was a place called hell, so cold and icy and dark and dismal, and that if you niggers don't behave yourself, you will sure go there. The old ones rocked to and fro and groaned significantly. The young ones stood in awe for we are not massa and missus there to back all this up. The women had one sacred duty to bear children. The men one compelling one to walk and obey. The old preacher sometimes married couples. He had seen his white master do so. He put the couples together for better or for worse till master parted them. When so parted, the woman exclaimed, My heart's broke, that's all. The little Pecaninis looked on in wonder. They saw daddy handcuffed and dragged away while mommy wiped her eyes with her apron and they wondered what it all meant. Would they get supper, compound and lasses that night or would mommy go too? If only mommy would stay, she stayed and the boys were content. They knew not what slavery meant. Our interest is for you to see that the Negroes abandoned the Creator and ran after the slave masters gods of Christianity and Islam. This was why they couldn't be protected from slavery. Whatever be the case, we challenge you and encourage you to look for these materials, read them yourself, conduct your own research instead of running after the media of the slave masters and how the US and Iran are grandstanding. Ask yourself why they do not report the killings in Biafra and Ambazonia. How come the media, whether for Iran or US, do not report that but they want to tell you about one person killed in Iran? When you begin to see their game the way they are playing it, you will begin to understand why they are slave masters, foot soldiers back in sub-Saharan Africa like the Nigerian army, the Cameroonian army are above the law. They can murder any number of people. You don't hear amnesty. You don't hear them talk about it. You see the Fulanese wipe out an entire community. Nobody talks about it. When you begin to talk about those things, your life will begin to have value. As a Negro or black person, we thank you very much for listening and we encourage you to find time to conduct your own research. Peace.